I'm at Gaston Lake today. I'm fishing with Dennis Gilmer, one of the best dock fishermen on the east coast of North America. And today he's going to show us how he catches these crappie on these docks in these hot summer months. So hey guys, stay with me and I hope you enjoy the video. Look at the fish chasing it. Look at the bass chasing it. Yeah. Hey guys, we got Boom Boom and Bam Bam back <laughs> on the lake today. Go catch some fish. So stay with us and I hope you enjoy the video. Amen. I want you to do say that again. So oh, let me say it again. Yeah, so so oh, you're so how far are you getting away from the actual dock to be set up, Denny? To cast to skip under a dock, you can get too close. You need room. I got a seven foot rod. If you got a shorter rod, you can get closer. I'm using a seven foot rod. I like about 15 to 18 foot because I'm. If you've got a seven foot rod, then you're only seven or eight feet from the dock, right? Right. If you're 15 foot. That gives you room to swing your rod, get your rod down close to the water, and get back under the dock. You want to hit, you want your bait to hit about a foot from the dock to just under the dock. To go on back under that. And i add something to you. Listen, here's a plus. This is a bonus. Some baits skip better than others. Uh, you'll find that out too. And 132nd all around is probably the easiest thing to skip. When you, when you skip a rock, you don't go over and pick up a rock that big around. You go over and pick up a little rock and you look for a flat rock. A bait's the same way. Not all baits skip the best. Because a flat rock, when it hits the water, it'll go ch ch ch. We all have done that, right? So you don't pick a round rock, right? You pick something that'll skip easy, and you don't pick a heavy rock. That's the point. So try different baits when you learn to skip. And these Tadpole Junior skips both the easiest. The LC Shad skips okay, all right? The Tweety Bird skips good. So the Willow Tail is probably the worst. So it's yeah. got that tail on the right, bottom right. on its round. This causes drag. Right, so the shape of the bait will make a difference. That, that LC Shad has that flat body. It skips pretty decent, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So. Try a different, try a different base till you learn to skip with it. Boom! Oh. Dennis got one on there. Bam! I did, yeah, I just threw to the front of the dock. Yeah, on this corner. Yeah. Just trying to sucker him out, and it did. He come on out there after it. It is 19 foot right here where we're sitting. The fish are how deep? The fish are eight foot. Little tadpole junior. That's, that's a nice little fish. He's oh yeah. Too. He's probably oh, close to 11 inches. Yeah, it's a nice. One. That's a good size. That's fun size right there. Hey guys, if you enjoy content about fishing, fishing techniques, and how to catch more fish, then be sure you subscribe to the channel. Be a part of the Wildlife Adventures YouTube community, and I appreciate all my subscribers. We get into the first dock this morning. Now, when you get to a dock, Dennis, what are you particularly looking for on the dock? You want, you look for a dock that has the, the most shades you can have. The bigger the platform it has, the bigger the top, even if it has like that boat with a cover, that's right, a plus, right. or a pontoon boat, right. it gives them more shade. Right. We don't yeah. have a real sunny day today, but this, if you got a real sunny day, it pushes them to that shade. Right. So today, today we're gonna have to scramble because it's cloudy just to find some on a dock. But that's what they do. They go ahead and run around. My opinion is they go ahead and run around in this open water. You're in the main channel. It's deep here, as you can see, it's 17 foot. They're hunting for food. This is a place for the rest of them. They come to a dock to get out of the sun. Right. For protection right. when they're not feeding. But you still can catch them when they're not feeding. You catch a few off each dock. There you go. Bam. We got, I talked him into biting, Dennis. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. boom. He was on that corner. That's a decent fish, too. Boom. He's probably 10 and an eighth. <laughs> Ten and eight, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good crappy right there. Good crappy. All right, let's get started. So when you position in your boat on the dock, what is what is the best method when you're trying to position the boat to fish the dock the most efficiently? Well, I take the wind in consideration and the current. This is a power lake where they make electricity, so. If they're releasing water from the dam above us and it's coming this way, you're going to have to face the current, okay? Right. The next thing okay. is the wind. 
If the wind's going the opposite direction, it can be tough. But hopefully if the wind's going the same direction, you want to face the wind. Yeah, we can feel the wind coming from our right right now, right. coming so this way. I turned the boat around to face up lake because the wind's coming at us and the right. current's coming this right. way. You can see the trash and, and the surface we, going that way. And then we can, ca we can cast right. underneath here. Right. It's a very little current right now, but still it's enough to hold the boat position with the current. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Bam. Just like that. Got him again? Oh, yeah. Bam. Take two. Next cast, as SpongeBob would say. You know, the funniest thing is we done been three places with crappy. Right. And Sam caught one or two the first place and one or two the second place. You just got to find some that's interested. You can spend all day, and in one school probably had 30 or 40 in it, didn't it, Sam? That's right. You got you caught, to... Uh, you caught maybe two there. Well, yep. But anyway, the point is, you can spend all day on a school of fish and catch one or two of them. You've got to move. If they're not biting, you can't make them bite. You've got to just keep that's, on going to find some fish that's interesting. Exactly right. And you catch them. You don't know if the huge school of dad just came through before you stopped there, and they, they, they fed up for 10 minutes. <laughs> just ate, you know? Oh, yeah. This yep, you got to find some that's interesting. Now we don't. We stopped here. We don't. It's not many fish here, but the ones that are here are mm, interesting. That's, aren't a, that's a good fish. Yes, that's a good fish. He's over eleven. We're at eleven. Um, the, but this school right here is interested, aren't they? They're, they're coming out from that dock. There's some trash on the corner of it, and they're running out from that trash and grabbing our baits. Boom. Yep. It's a good fish. Yes, it? So if you're trying to get your lure underneath that dock, you want to start with your rod tip low. And see how I, it hit the water here and then skipped back up underneath there. And I always like to drag the rod back like this, flip the bail. By dragging the rod back, allowing some line, you'll get a straight fall down. And then you can start your retrieve. Oh, he bumped it, but he didn't. There he is. There he is. And that's what we after right there. Let's see, that was perfect. Perfect cast, let it fall right into the fish's mouth. Oh, boom! That's a nice fish, too. And that's what dock fishing is all about, right there, baby. Pretty color, too. Nice crappy. Back he goes. So guys, when you're picking out a dock, uh, we've been talking about it. You can see behind me how steep the bank is. So the, basically the bank runs like this. So you, you pick a steep, on the steeper side of the lake, you'll see the slope is a lot steeper here. So the water basically starts from zero out to almost 20 feet right out here in front of the dock. And these crappy are hanging out kind of right to the edge of the boat right there that you can see right here right up underneath that ladder there and then they they, they pl have placed themselves in the most shade that they can find right there that's where we're picking the crappy up right there and so we're just having to keep the rod tip really low to the water and skipping back up underneath that dock and you need to get it to whole width of that dock so you need to get it at least six feet back up under the dock where the shade is oh that's where the crappy is boom mm-hmm I felt him, I let that drop. I'm gonna, he's gonna be in that little piece of rope right there. Maybe he'll come out. Had to get him out of the rope. Cowboy, you was roping him too. Hey, we roped him right in there, didn't we? Got him on that hot tail bait right there. Boom. Let me see what you're talking about. You can't beat that dipstick color. That's a That's good your color. favorite color. So look. Y'all look at that green in that fish's head right there. Look, mm -hmm. see that green? It matches mm -hmm. that color right there. Yeah, if the sun was shining, you're spinning, you see a little blue mm -hmm. and purple up in here too. Mm -hmm. Crap, it really pretty in this watercolor. So I want to show y'all the difference in those two lures. What what size head is that right there? That's 1 32nd. You, you're throwing a 1 32nd, mm -hmm. and I'm throwing a 16th. And what pound test line? Four. Throw? Four pound, four pound test line and I'm throwing six mm -hmm. and why do you throw why do you throw that 
small of a lure back up under the dock. Because I want to sink slow and it skips easier. It's, the lighter it's, it skips. The lighter easier. it is, the easier it skips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so by being four pound test line, it's it's sinking at a slow rate because it's a, a lot less weight. Right. I'm throwing a sixteenth with a six pound test line, so it's still sinking at roughly the same rate mm -hmm. because of the the bait is larger, so it's got a lot more water resistance when it's sinking. So they're still That's sinking right. pretty much about the same rate. It won't be much difference. Yeah, yeah, it's about the about the same rate. Yeah, I don't think it's much difference between four and six for that. The main thing about the four pound test is to me it comes off my reel easier. Right. right. Two's even better. That's why I love two. Right, because that gives you a little, if it comes off easier, you can pitch further back you can up skip under the dock. Skip further. Skip right. further back up under the dock. All right. That's right. Well, let's go see if it's some crappy under this dock right here. <laughs> We're well, not easy to get to. Finally talked one out. We're not easy to get back to. Yeah. That's yeah, a decent crappy. Yeah. I think it'll be a little bigger than that. Good crappy. That's a good one. He's barely hooked too. And we did a quick release on him back in the water. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Thank you, thank you. The trick here is getting to him, man. Yeah, I've been trying to let it sink differently, different, different, different depths. I see they went back with that black arm. They've been working on this. Oh, Man, you got them stirred up now. Oh, they done start feeding now. Yeah. Yeah, pretty we've old crappy. We've been on this dock, guys, for quite a few minutes. Pretty old crappy right there. And uh, the crappy were way back under there. And couldn't get them to hit. Sam catches one now, they're far. Sometimes you can catch one in the school oh, where we'll start yeah, feeding. Yeah, they'll stir up. Yeah. Boom. Yes, sir. We'll take it. Yeah, I'll get the bark on top of the brace. Bam! All right, guys, this is new for me. I just done something today I haven't, haven't done for a long time. I'll tell you all about it in a minute. Bam, that's is a nice that, fish. Is that the weedless head? Yeah, this is a... Oh, this is a... Um, but Dennis, show us that. You, shoot, you using that weedless? So show yeah, the folks at this home is the first time I ever used this with this type bait with this chaos. This is the the chaos bait. Let me get him right back and see. This is a Charlie Brewer slider head. Okay, all right. And they're made to use that little Charlie Brewer bait that has a little knobby tail. I got thinking about this last night. I thought, why cannot we use this with this chaos? So that's what I done. That way you can use it weedless. Now you heard me earlier talking about getting hung up all the time. What I done was bring it through. It's kind of a bass fishing trick. Then I kind of Skin hooked it on the back like that. Right. So right. it's weedless. And so you can it's get weedless. Over those braces. Yep. Came right over the braces. Bam. There you go, guys. There's another technique. Uh, that was the first cast with it. I caught a fish with it. So hey, this is a new color I'm playing with, guys. I don't even have a name for it. It's kind of like a blue ice. I don't know. It's, just, it's two colors. I know it's not showing up. The back is violet with a drop of neon blue, and the bottom is basically clear, just flake. Bam. I was wondering. <laughs> wow. Look at the fish chasing him. Look at the bass chasing him. Yeah. It's insane. Good gracious. That was like a, what, five pound fish? Decent sized bass, yeah. Like a five pound bass chasing him. I've had him grab him before, haven't you? I've had him yeah, grab oh, him yeah, crappy yeah. and take off, and of course, there's no hook to get him. Wow. That's a good fish. He, he's after crappy snack. Yeah, he was up to a crappy snack. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Nice he was fish. he's gonna be done. Switched on you, blue moon. Uh oh, blue moon. You can't beat the blue moon. Yeah. Yes, sir, boy. Blue moon. Bam. He said, "Let's get him." Oh, bam! <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> oh. He was say, "Let's get him." He didn't cue me in. Oh, I'm sorry. We should have. <laughs> Look, we got to script this thing, don't we? <laughs> we got to script. No, it's your show. I was letting you do it. Yeah, we need to. We need to script it. Yeah, I was letting you do it. Yeah.